Good morning, I've got a bit of a special video today actually, it's a collaboration. I was going to make a video about Range Rover values, Range Rover insurance, and you know I quite like to talk about Porsche Taycan values as well and how they're a great buy second hand because they're so cheap. And I thought, do you know what? I'll just phone the expert. I'm gonna to speak to Richard from Challenge the Road. And if you don't already subscribe to Richard from Challenge the Road, the link is here. He's doing some great content on what's going on with the Range Rover market, values, insurance, and all sorts. And I just thought, let's have a chat and he could fill us in on what exactly is going on. Let's get him on the phone. Good morning, Richard from Challenge the Road. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff, how are you? I'm very well indeed. What's going on, isn't there? What's going on? There is lots going on. And can I first say, I think your channel is excellent and everybody should subscribe because the information you're putting out is superb. Um, what is going on with Range Rovers? Well, I think we've, we've obviously got a huge problem with this this insurance. Um, and so I talk a little bit about how it sort of happened. So basically, you know, I had a Range Rover myself, had a mild hybrid and, and sort of my skill is picking depreciated cars that I can use and not lose much money. And I had the mild hybrid, really enjoyed that, um, sold it for more than I paid for. It was like 120,000 new. I paid, I think, 38, sold it for 45. And I thought, well, I'll go to the P400E. Um, had a lot of trouble finding one at the time and I found one. It was 110 new and I paid about 75. When, when would that and have then, been? What, so what sort of time frame are we talking? That's probably about, we're talking about um, August last year. Okay. Um, and I think I sold it in about March 23. Um, <laughs> but what happened was I was, because I'm obviously just in the know with cars and what's going on, they were saying a lot about these thefts in London. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go on the internet, just look at values. And, and there was loads for, for mm, this is going to be a bit of a problem. So I was out um, at 65. Yeah. And then I went to the van, which, you know, I've been, been happy with. And then I thought, well, I normally do a six month stint because then I've got more content uh, um, and go to something else. And I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, look at the, the Range Rover, the Taycan and a few others. And... I looked up the Range Rover and I thought, hold on, I can get my car for 40,000. The car that you've just not, not long ago but, sold yeah, for 65. Um, and I thought, what the hell has gone on here? Because this is like gone down another 25. Yeah. And then I started to just get more facts on it, talk to a few more people. I know a lot of people in the car trade and different bits. Um, and they were saying, yeah, this, this theft is getting worse. And I thought, right, I just need the facts. Because normally my videos are like reviewing cars and nice things. And, you know, because it's what, what I enjoy. It's my hobby. And then I thought, right, I'm, I'm going to have to put it out there because this is not good. And I had then had a lot of people coming to me because normally a lot of my friends obviously come to me for car advice. Yeah. All the time. I'm the guy they go to. Boom. And then they started to say, Richard... I need to tell other people, can you do something on YouTube? And, and that's sort of how it started. So people are coming to you saying, uh, why can't I insure my Range Rover? Why is my, what, what are they saying? Are they asking why the values well, are dropping? Or? about the recall. Um, so that was sort of straight away off the video I was getting. I mean, I've probably replied to over a thousand messages. The video that I watched of yours that was absolutely brilliant was talking about the sheer number of these Range Rovers that are being stolen. And... Mm. Remind me what you said in the video. You thought that X number were being stolen in London, but actually you found out it was... Was it five to ten a week were being stolen in London? Then you found out it was... Yeah, sorry. Well, it was five to ten a week when I, when I heard about it, um, which which was quite a lot. And then, it, you know, I heard that it went up to sort of 90. Nine, 90 Range Rovers a week being stolen in London. And then I thought, crikey, this is just going to be... This is just going to destroy values. Um, and obviously it's, you know, people's sort of second biggest purchase is a car and yeah. they're going to be used to going in their showroom and getting a, a decent price on a residual and it's just not going to happen. And then I was finding out that, um, dealerships I know weren't even taking them in. And that's why I thought I've got to put this video out because it's not, a, you know, <clears throat> it's not a normal video for me because it's not exactly hugely positive, but I thought, well, can I turn it round? You know, can I help? Um, which I think I, I will be able to. So it's cars between 2018 and 2022 that are affected by this recall, and it's to do with the keyless uh, entry, and that's why they're being stolen so easily. I mean, they're being taken in, what, a minute? 
Yeah, I said, what, what I don't quite understand is that in the Jaguars, they have the, the correct system. So basically, when you get out the car, it will stop pulsing after sort of two minutes. So looking for the key, basically. Yeah. But on the Land Rovers, Discoveries, Range Rovers, um, Evokes, it continually pulses. So basically, you have one guy by your door, another guy by the car. I won't tell you how it works, but basically, um, it will pulse as if it's replicating the key and will let you in and you can start the car. So all they have to do basically is use a device that makes that connection between the key and the car and they're good to go. Yeah. And a lot of these cars. This, this is what the recall is. So the recall is, I know they've called it a security enhancement update, um, but basically it just stops that repeater working. Right. Okay. It seems very odd that, like you said, it seems odd that Jaguar and Land Rover are using different systems. Um, that I, I find that very strange that they didn't think about that earlier on. Yeah, well, I think it's only the F type in Jaguar hasn't got it. I'm not sure why. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm still sort of collating because it, it's happened so quickly. I'm, I'm collating more and more detail because obviously in this letter to them, I want absolute facts to them. Like, you know, everything I'm trying to do, I want to back up. Yeah. Um, Jaguar are helping by putting a lot of stuff in the press. I don't know if you saw. I've, I think it was I've, on Sunday. There was a huge bit in Sunday Times. Yeah, I've seen a few bits. And like myself, if I make a video on, on a subject that I'm, I don't know a huge amount about, by the time the video has been on YouTube for a couple of days and I've read a thousand comments, everything else comes out of the woodwork. And I'm sure you're the same. You've gone through all of your comments and realised that the issue is perhaps... What, what what was the reaction to that video? Well, I mean, my, my original business was mobile phones and I've got a lot of sports people with phones through my company and they were messaging me and we're talking, you know, England international players um, saying, Richard, I've had two stolen in a week. Yeah. Um, so it, it really sort of kicked off very quickly. I'm actually talking to some of them today just to say, well, if you had two in a, in sorry, it wasn't a week, two in a month, sorry. What what are you driving now? Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Like, you can't still be in a road, but I know that obviously some of them were sponsored. Yes. Yeah. Um, as well. So, but I'm I'm going to chat with them because obviously when I do this letter. You know, I really want to get in front of JLR because even though I don't own one now like my sister does and she rung me a couple of days ago to say, look, you know, they've rung me and said my new Range Rover hybrids there in December. And I said, just don't take it. Wow. I said, stick, stick with your P400E now. And, and she said, you know, yeah, they've offered me not a lot for the car now. I said, I oh, know, just stick with it because it, it's not that it's, you know, it's a lovely car. Fine. But it's just this depreciation and this risk. And then on the insurance side of things, you've got that many cars being stolen um, and that is now having a knock-on effect in insurance. But lastly, on stolen cars, you said in your video that I think you posted yesterday that Land Rover actually have their own team working flat out to recover their own cars. So this is their own vehicles that are being taken from what, four courts? Yeah, from four courts um, and, and they're having to try because it, it, it's, it was that bad. I mean, I don't know how bad it is now as in because i assume they've probably recalled their own vehicles um but it's like with my sister's car I, we took it straight down there and the recall had been done but she didn't know right um so it, you know i think if you get that recall then you're in a stronger position obviously yeah obviously it's pulsing all the time and i think they said on there there's sixty five thousand vehicles to go um i think my my concern is more you know, as a, as a business, they should be, you know, these older cars. So 2010 was when Keyless Go come out, I think, on the, the Range Rovers and Discoveries and stuff. So what happens for them people in that? That's what I worry about, them people in that area, because that's a lot of cars. Well, you're talking every Range Rover between 2010 and 2022. That's 12 years worth of vehicles. That is a horrendous amount. <laughs> So I, I started... And that, that's why I want to sort of take it up, because obviously I get a lot of messages from friends going, Richard, well, I've got a 2016. I've got, I said, yeah, I'm working on it. I try. I don't know if they're going to do this and then roll it back more, or could there be a cost to it? You know, I don't know. I just think they haven't really got a plan. I'd yeah. like to see a plan of action and go, right, OK, we're going to have to do this structured. We're going to get... 2018 to 22 done then we're gonna we are going to offer something for i don't know 15 to 17 models it's it, you know, it's just very 
um, wish washy, and, and I felt like it was getting brushed under the carpet. Absolutely, and without YouTubers like yourself highlighting this issue, it becomes a lot easier for brands to get away with it basically and try and perhaps keep it quiet and maybe perhaps keep a lid on the true numbers of cars that are being stolen but when people like yourself put your head above the parapet and say do you know what this is a problem we do need to look at the numbers we need to look at how much of this is happening then everybody else comes out the woodwork and comments and says actually you know me too my Range Rover was taken my Range Rover was taken suddenly you've got a collective of people and you can actually get some action from the brand so it seems like that's that's the direction you're heading and it could be quite positive for Range Rover owners, but as you said in your video today, the knock-on effect on insurance. Talk to me about what's gone on with insurance over the last few yeah, months. Yeah, so I've got some of my clients is like the second largest, you know, insurance company in the world, and I met with some of their directors for breakfast, had a chat with them, and I just said, you know, hey, and and they were complaining to me about their insurance on their car. Wow. And I said, well, um, I said this is a big problem, and I don't know, you know, are, are you thinking about what you do? I, I think the thing for me at the moment is that I mean I was going to look at the ghost product I had I've had a lot of I mean I'm not sponsored by anyone you know I don't this is just my own videos you know there's no sponsorship I don't need sponsorship but I've been offered a lot of phantom alarms ghost these type of systems but if the insurance price doesn't change what's the point absolutely so as you said and that's what I'm seeing on the comments they're saying well I've, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this but if my insurance is a thousand pounds and now it's eighteen thousand which you're seeing what where do you go you're just spending out more money well th th this is where i ended up stumbling into all of this because i bought an l322 not too long ago uh phoned my insurer to add it onto the policy and nearly fell off my chair when he told me how much it was going to be to add that car on and suddenly i thought hang on a minute, it's just a TD6 L322, that seems quite, like quite a lot. Then I was active in all the Facebook groups and started to see posts from people saying, why has my insurance gone up two, three, four times? And then a car dealer friend of mine told me about a customer of his who had a 2018 Range Rover, he was paying £1,500 a year to insure, went to renew and was quoted £15,000. So this seems to yeah. Well, it was like that call, you know, on the Taycan Monday, you know, where I said it was eight hundred pounds for the Taycan, and they said, well, if you're a new customer, it's twenty five thousand minimum. So if you're if you're a new customer going to that broker and you want to insure a new Range Rover, it's twenty five thousand pounds a year for the insurance minimum. Yeah, minimum. So I guess high net worth individuals, um, even they, if you're worth all the money in the world. Even you must have a line where you say, that's ridiculous. I'll well, just... if you look at my policy, I mean, I've got over 20 cars on that policy, and that's about what the premium is. Yeah. So I said, how can, you know, one car is as much as my premium? You know, which is just... But, but I think that, you know, normally as well, high net worth individuals, they're not stupid with money. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you can pay 800 instead of 25,000, there's a, there's a, there's a breaking limit. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, I would, I wouldn't want to pay over two and a half. Yeah. Really? Cause I've got a clean record. I mean, you know, good locations, but I think in London, I think if you look at some of the stories that, you know, people are just not getting any insurance at all. So they bought the car. And they can't insure yeah. it. This is what I'm hearing. We're, we're getting um, insurance black spots, not just on Range Rovers as well, but interestingly on, on quite a few other vehicles. Um, we just genuinely have black spots where you, you can't get insurance in that area. And I mean, London's got to be a huge market for Range Rover. This is really quite a big problem, isn't it? And as you say, if they've done the recall and if you've fitted your, you know, your immobilizer or whatever else and done everything else that you can, and your insurance still isn't coming down, where do you see this going well, if, with value? If JLR pull their own insurance. So this is, so Jaguar have their own insurance when you buy a car? They had their own policy, they had their own insurance and they, they pulled that apparently about a year ago. And then people who are getting quotes, I think, I'm not sure if you're an existing customer, you can still use it, but the quotes were higher than through other people. So I, I, I just feel like, if I was running JLR now, I would be thinking, well, I've got to get my own insurance broker to back what I'm doing because I've got very loyal customers who've been loyal to me as a brand and I'm doing nothing for them. And these insurance quotes are going to go up and up. You have to have your own product. And, and also you've got to start backing your own product. You built it. 
You yeah. know, you, you've got to back it. I mean, if I if it was in my business, you, sometimes you you know we've always been in a position where we have to take losses. Things go wrong. Things happen. You know, if I sold you a phone now and you said it's not working, then you, you're just going to get another phone, Jeff. Yeah. You know, we we need to sort it out because that happens. You know, some of the phones don't work, whatever. And I just think they need to really wake up a little bit. Yeah. Because people I'm talking to are like just saying, well, I'm not going to have another Land Rover. And then that'll take a long time. They only need to just come out and be transparent. I mean, we're not, I think, you know, we're not stupid. Yeah. You know, we know what's going on. And, you know, we also the cost of living has gone so high anyway. If you can, if you are now, you know, five, six times more on your insurance, huge amount. It is. It's huge. And I wonder, and again, talk about break points. There's got to be a breaking point for Land Rover where dealers are saying, hang on a minute. Everybody's phoning up and saying they don't actually want to take delivery of the X, Y, Z that they've ordered. They're going to get something else instead. The dealer then reports back to the brand. Alarm bells must be ringing at JLR head office mm. about this. Well, I heard um, that people are now seeing that they will only get 50% of the car value. Really? If they're insured. So I think that's something, you know, that's because obviously more is coming out of the woodwork all the time. Yeah. And I think it's very, you know, what is the excess? What is your policy on theft? You know, and how does it, you know, I said about, um, you know, that the guys, you know, he's got two Ferraris in the garage. He has to take one out to put the Range Rover in because he's not insured unless it's in a garage. I nearly spat on that postcode. I nearly spat my coffee out when I listened to that on your. On, on <laughs> I couldn't your... believe it when he's telling me. I'm thinking, I've got to say it, but I thought people wouldn't believe me. But that's what's had to happen. I'm like, how can you have a speciality on your drive and a Range Rover in your garage? It just, just, just ludicrous. So <laughs> it's just crazy. I guess this one then is it's a developing thing. You're obviously trying to get this letter together to JLR to to get some sort of traction to essentially protect the value of the vehicles for people. So anyone who owns a Range Rover, I guess, go over and follow uh, Challenge the Road because we'll see where this one ends up, essentially. I I, I really, um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to observe where we go with it. Yeah, well, at the moment, we're taking all the comments off. So my PA is taking them all off. And then, so it's quite important people do comment. And then we're trying to put that into a logical, because I'm only a small channel, I know that, you know. So... I'm just trying to put it all together logically, but then I have got, you know, these sports stars I know and that who've had a lot of problems as well. And I'm just going to try and keep adding weight and then yeah. try and see, you know, if I can push. I think I can because, um, you know, I'm a knowledgeable person. I, you've done very well in business. I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm a very difficult person to get around. Yeah. So I think they need to come to me with stuff, you know, proper facts and, and, and give us a plan. Even if they just said, Jeff, if they say, well, 2018's it. Yeah. We're not doing any, then fine. But if you're going to do that, then give us an option of where we should go. Should we use Ghost? Should we use Phantom? Should, does it invalidate our warranty if I've got extended warranty? You, they've got to give us a plan. They just can't keep keeping everything under closed doors. Yeah, and we need a guaranteed solution that will stop the car from being stolen. And then we need to be able to go to our insurers and say, I fitted this solution. Now my policy needs to come down by 40, 50%. So, the, you know, the, the insurers and JLR really need to sort of bang their heads together and try and work this out. Because the only other um, net result from this is everybody gives up on their Range Rovers and gets something else. That's what I see happening. I, I see, the, you know, the value dropping out of them. I, you know, and I, and it's, I haven't really, you know, gone into that too much because it's not a nice thing. I don't, you know, because you know, a lot of my friends have got Range Rovers, Discoveries, and all that, and they're paying like 120 grand for these cars. I mean, I am hearing that the newer ones are still getting taken. That's but I think interesting. It's not at quite a low rate, so yeah. even though you've got the recall, there's still, but it, it is reduced. But yeah. there's no way you can buy. A, I don't care how wealthy you are, you can't pay like 25,000 insurance. I mean, maybe you've got two of them, it's 50 grand. Well, it's the I risk. Just can't, I can't. They, they just come out of it, you know. It's the risk to your house as well. I mean, you know, do you really want to put something on your drive that is going to have people snooping around on your driveway? Um, if people know that it's happening mm. at that rate, that they will just That's go buy something else. That's another good point, actually, because people have commented to say they worry that people will come in the house for the key um, because obviously it's it's easy to take. But I mean, the keyless go is happening across 
you know other brands i haven't gone into yeah. that yet because the land rover one's taken up a lot of my time yeah yeah um, full, full, full disclosure but, uh, there you know th th this is a problem across the board it's absolutely not just and it's been going on for years it's not a new thing to range rover is it you know people have been taking cars no, on keyless for a long the time way you, the way you, you you do that transmitter really that's they, I, my, I personally think they could have um handled it a lot better told people and maybe if if my video hadn't come out i'm not sure anyone would know absolutely they would just go in for a normal service and they would do this update not tell you i mean it was tricky even talking to them down there about it um yeah. and it's obviously got a little bit more tricky because obviously people sort of know and once i get that wig and glasses i'll be able to go in there fine but um yeah. I'll have to lend you a flat it's just, cap. I can't sort of, <laughs> like I was trying to say to them, what, what is this update? You know, just ex explain it to me, you know, and what's it giving me? And they didn't really know. And, you know, all these service teams, they need to have knowledge. I yeah. want to know what, what is it, you know, how does it work? Um, but, yeah, it's going to be an interesting few weeks. I say at the moment, we're just collating all the comments. It's getting it together. I've I've done some other stuff last night, actually, just with some dealerships. Yeah. So I thought if JLR don't come back to me, I want to go into some dealerships to the service teams and go, right, okay, so how is this helping? What are we seeing? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I have to do it. You know, yeah. and I, I will get there. It's yeah. just, it's just, you know, I just keep knocking the door down. Well, I think I'll, I'll keep in touch with you, and I'll I will come down and see you in in the coming weeks, and we'll. But well, you see. want to see these escort Cosworths, don't you? Because that'd be quite. Because they they were the the problem car of my day. You I, know, they were more to to ensure than the value of the car. Well, when when we spoke on the phone briefly this morning, you said that when you looked at buying an escort Cosworth, the price was what twenty thousand pounds, and the insurance was eighteen thousand pounds. I know, and then I lost my deposit. <laughs> um, I was only 23 back then, a long time ago. But, yeah, I love that car. But that was the same thing, wasn't it? I mean, I, someone messaged me the other day on Instagram saying, oh, we, um, when that happened with the insurance, they literally just didn't drive the car. They just put it in a barn. Wow. And they've recently just sold the car for, like, I think it was 80, 82,000. Yeah, um, I, I mean... But obviously the values on them went to nothing, didn't they? Which is what I think could happen with the Land Rovers. I mean, I... I I, I just don't know what I would... I just wouldn't buy one at the moment, and that's me. I mean, even if... It just needs to get sorted out, and that, that that's my feeling on it. Um, yeah. But also, if you come out the car now, and we do get resolution... I mean, surely there's only so many can be stolen, isn't there? I mean, if you're stealing one in every hundred cars, there's got to be a, a limit. And also, what are the police doing? I think you know, there's... Where, how can you hide this two-and-a-half-ton car there's a bigger conversation here as well because you in your video you said that they're destined for the congo container ships well if that's if that's the case that's where they're going and 90 are being stolen every day surely we just need to put a police car on one of the main roads to the dock and we'll find them all it seems odd to well, exactly. me that... <laughs> i mean it just doesn't i mean it, just, it is but i just i just have a feeling it's not taken that seriously at the moment I mean, this is serious levels of crime. It is, you know, and and if and if you you've got a concern, I mean, I went through the Channel Tunnel the other week to go to a fishing because fishing is my my other passion. Okay, you know, I, I've got lots of lakes, and that's what I love. And we went to France, and we went through, and they scanned the van, and then the van had to go through a thing, and I went through a scanner, and the, and I think, well, how can you take a, a, you know four Range Rovers through? Yeah. I remember thinking you the know. same thing when we came back from France and they were searching the roof box on our BMW 3 Series. I'm thinking, what, <laughs> what, what exactly are you looking for up there? I've got two kids crying in the back. My wife's moaning on the front seat. What do you think is in the roof box? <laughs> so, so I mean, I think that obviously it's, you know, it's a hugely luxurious, you know, car. I think a lot of it is the engines as well um, that people want. So. Why do they want the engines? It's just someone, someone messaged me about it, just saying that a lot of them just want parts because I think that aren't Land Rover struggling with parts? Right, right. So if you're in, so if you've got, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing this as well, it's probably another video, but basically that there's a huge amount of warranty claims at the moment and, and Land Rover haven't got enough parts. It's probably Land Rover. So I, I, it's, I think I found them all, Richard. I, I think it's Land Rover so it's stealing Land Rover, them. Yeah. Land Rover have got them. Land Rover. You know, using it for warranty. Yeah. But you could be in the, the older stuff as well, if they, because you had COVID and you had this big restriction of supply. Yeah. That people could be breaking them to service older cars as well. But as I say, it, yeah. has, to, it has to come to a point. I know that the, the thefts in London have dropped right down, but I just I assume it's just because you, you can't park your car there. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you can't. Or you, you know, you run out of Range Rovers. You yeah. Know <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that that is obviously no, a, a developing story. Then that that I know we'll keep an eye on, on your channel. And can I just say, if you're li if you're watching this video, please go and subscribe to Challenge the Road because Richard put some great videos out. And you've just bought yourself a new car, which excites me greatly. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've gone, um, you know, obviously putting out the video about, I, you know, I'm not convinced on the charging network yep. on EVs, and I did try it, and it didn't work for me, but I've gone to the, the seven kilowatt charger at home, Yeah. Um, and a lot of messages were like, Richard, you hate EVs, you're an idiot, and all this, but I'm not an idiot, and I just think, I thought, right, I'm just going to buy the best one, so... That's the take and so within five minutes I bought it, I picked it up Monday, I'm driving it, um, and yeah, we'll see. But I'd, I'd like to just do everything in real life. If, I, if I'm going to review and do something, I want to do it because, you know, like I said on my video on there, you know, we're not all, you know, I'm rushing around. I pick up the kids from school yeah. five days a week. You know, I haven't got time sometimes to wait an hour for a car to charge and do that. I'm buzzing about. They've got hockey. They've got netball. They've got, and, and then you've got other people, you know, I watch a lot on EVs. So you imagine, I mean, you probably watch a lot as well, but I reckon I watch 50 YouTube videos a day. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the just the way through, we are. But just on different subjects, I'm just, you know, it's just I'm into it and I and I enjoy it. And I was watching some EV stuff and I, I looked at the crowd and I thought, crikey, it's a really old crowd here. Yeah. You know, how many mums could run like this or dads, you know, like me, I'm running around. Like, can, can it can it work? And it didn't work for me. And that was just my opinion. But I know that, you know, you've got people who are just, you know, EV forever. But there's yeah. some great hydrogen stuff happening. Yeah, there's there is. some great e-fuel. I only if you saw, you know, a couple of days ago, there was some great stuff on hydrogen engines for yeah. sort of diggers and machinery. Yeah. Um, you know, the plane last night that flew on uh, cooking oil yeah. to New yeah. York. You know, there's, you know, is there, I don't know if they've, obviously they've delayed it to 20 35 I don't, and that's going to give everyone a bit more time yeah um so yeah it's quite exciting i'm doing it off a solar charger at the moment well that's what i was going to say last two things firstly your what was the list price on your taycan so they were 106 and it was i think just over 11 months old and i gave 66 Sixty-six thousand pounds for a mm. car, and I'd imagine it's got a few. It's just off Auto Trade, the same as you guys. You can learn. And I, I just had a feeling, Jeff, that if people are coming out of Land Rovers, what are they going to go to? Yeah. And are they going to be thinking in the same way as me? But obviously, I need to buy them. <laughs> if everyone comes out of Land Rovers, all the other cars are going to go up, aren't they? I, I think it's a sensible buy as a second-hand car. Um, I mean, with a few options on your Taycan, I mean, I mean, they get quite quickly up to sort of 130, 140, don't they? Once you've added a few toys. So to be able to buy that, that's less than a year old for less than half price. Um, you've got to admit, it starts to look like a bit of a bargain, doesn't it? As you know. Well, yeah. And I, you know, I had some info on, on Taycans that they're really dropping. Right. You know, I had, I had one where, um, one had dropped 40,000 in three months. Wow. Um, so I knew they were on, and I, I don't know if I've, I don't think I've bought at the bottom, but I think that I want to produce good content and obviously I, I want to do real life stuff and I love cars. I mean, it is phenomenal to drive, Jeff. It really, I mean, I, I was quite taken aback if I'm, I, at one point I was thinking it's one of the best cars I've ever driven. And if you imagine I've had like 160 odd cars some since of, I was 18. Yeah. And some of your cars have been pretty high end. So that is praise indeed for the Taycan, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking it's reminding me of my Subaru 22B. It's reminding me of a Mitsubishi Evo. And, yeah. it's, and then it's reminding me of RS4, Yeah, you know, which I love as a car. And it's the only estate EV. And the only, I mean, I'm just trying to sort out sort of the boot and everything at the moment. So it's a bit smaller than I thought. But, yeah. but from a driving experience, it's really good. But I still feel the range is still quite... I mean, it said 304. And at the moment, I think I'm looking at like 220. Yeah. But they're saying because it's cold and all this rubbish. But I think I really want to know what is it. You know, I don't want to compromise my life around it. I want to drive at five mile an hour everywhere. Yeah. I want to just drive it as if I haven't done anything. What is the real? And then I can say to people, that is the real world range. You yeah. Know, it, it would be. Oh, and it's so fast. They are I mean, fast. Just, it's crazy. Yeah. 
And there's something nice about driving a car that's very quiet and it's got all the kit on it and all of that sort of stuff. I've, I've, I've got a good friend actually who's got a, who's got a Taycan and we do road trips together. So maybe maybe in the new year, Rich, when you've got to know the car a bit better, you'll have to join us for um, join us yeah. for an adventure with it. I think I'm going to have to buy another one though because as soon as I come in, my wife was. Um, oh really? <laughs> on to that, yeah. It looked fantastic, <laughs> didn't it? She was a bit like, well, I. Maybe I should have a new car for, oh, this is, this Taycan's going to be gone. They are. So I'm going to get the videos done and then see, because it, it's a fantastic looking car as well, isn't it? And for her, it would work because yeah. she's a teacher. She goes back and forward from school. Um, the charging's fast. It's no problem. Yeah. Um, so I might have to maybe look at another one, I think, because uh, I think that one's going to be gone. Well, it sounds like if you bought that one for 60 odd, the next one you might, it might start with a three. <laughs> yeah, I hope not because I've lost on mine. But, um, but anyway, you're yeah, you're that, you're yeah. also planning to charge this. You you're going to run your Taycan for your YouTube channel only on solar for all of December. Am I right? Yep, that's right. That's and, brilliant. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I hope it's sunny. Um, <laughs> it's not I've today. Got a Ten kilowatt um, solar system here. Yeah. So I'm going to run the. I've already started doing it before the first, and then I just said, look, I'll run it till it runs out. I think I think I'll be okay because okay. I've got it's, I've got a battery backup system as well. Yeah. On there. Um, but I just thought it'd just be interesting, wouldn't it? I just like doing things that are different, and I yeah. always thought that electric would be very very cheap and and when i've done some of the figures i think that it's just the same price yeah but my mind when it originally come out i thought oh this is going to be cheap and you know it should be like you know i don't know 20 pounds to run or something yes yeah. well this this is what it's we've been that's what we found across our road trips you know if you could charge at home and use them for bimbling around then that's fine but mm. when you try to go do any bigger trip you're paying the same if not more as you would in a petrol car, and then you add on the depreciation as well, and suddenly saving the planet is quite expensive. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big advocate of hybrid, and, yeah. and I, I just don't really understand why they pushed us to full electric or tried to yeah. so quickly. Yeah. You know, hybrid is just fantastic. I mean, as I say, on my wife's car, we had a McCann diesel, which we loved, and she was paying 220 a month. And now I think her fuel bill on the Q5, which is the best, that Q5 hybrid is, you know, super car. And, you know, it's 50 pounds a month now. Yeah. But okay. she's got no anxiety of range or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Which, which I would have with this take and I'm not sure I could just take it down to Devon or somewhere. Yeah. I think I'd be. I'd have to have another car, which is the problem again, isn't it? I do. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, stay on the line a set, Richard. I'm, I'm just going to wrap this one up and then, um, yeah, we'll we'll sort out coming down. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Please make sure you go subscribe to Richard. Put some great content out, as you can tell. And we'll see how he does with charging the Taycan on solar through December. Thank you very much for watching.